Did you buy one of those popular pills that combine vitamin K2 and D3, hoping it would clean out your arteries and protect your heart? You're not alone. Millions of people over 60 take it every day. But here's something you might not expect. Taking these two vitamins together in the same pill may not work the way you think, and could even be risky. In today's video, we're going to uncover the truth, based on real science, about how K2 and D3 affect your heart, your bones, and your overall health. Ready to clear up the confusion? So let's start with the basics. What exactly is vitamin K2, and why are so many people talking about it these days? Vitamin K2 is found in foods like cheese, egg yolks, beef liver, and fermented dishes such as natto or sauerkraut. It's not the same as vitamin K1, which affects blood clotting. K2 helps regulate calcium, not by sweeping it out of arteries, but by activating proteins that tell calcium where to go. Two important proteins it supports, matrix GLA protein, MGP, helps slow calcium buildup in arteries. Osteocalcin helps move calcium into your bones. K2 comes in forms like MK4 and MK7, both of which are helpful. The key idea, vitamin K2 acts like a traffic director for calcium, making sure it strengthens your bones instead of hardening your arteries. Now let's dig into what really matters. Does vitamin K2 actually clean your arteries? Here's the short answer. Not exactly. K2 doesn't scrub out plaque like a pipe cleaner, but research shows it can slow the progression of calcium buildup in your arteries. That's important. Studies have found that K2 supports the function of matrix GLA protein, the enzyme that helps prevent calcium from settling where it doesn't belong. So while it doesn't reverse plaque, it may keep things from getting worse. Even more impressive, K2 appears to improve metabolic health, especially in people with prediabetes or insulin resistance. That matters because insulin resistance is one of the most overlooked causes of heart attacks and strokes in older adults. So while K2 might not be a magic bullet, it plays a strong supporting role, not by removing calcium, but by helping your body manage where calcium goes, and by improving the systems that affect your heart health overall. It's not a miracle cure, but it may be part of a powerful prevention strategy. Let's talk dosage. If you want real benefits from vitamin K2, the amount matters more than you might think. For general support of heart and metabolic health, most experts recommend at least 400 micrograms of vitamin K2 daily. If you're dealing with osteoporosis or bone loss, higher doses up to 45 milligrams, not micrograms, may be appropriate. This higher dose has shown positive effects in clinical studies. Now here's the catch. Most combination K2 plus D3 pills only provide about 90 micrograms of K2. That's just not enough to make a difference. If you try to increase your K2 by taking more of that combo pill, you'll also raise your D3 level, and that could lead to problems. We'll talk more about that shortly. So the smart move? Take your K2 on its own. That way, you can adjust your dose without affecting your D3. And as always, talk to your doctor before making any changes to your supplement routine. You might be wondering, is vitamin K2 safe? For most people, the answer is yes. K2 is generally well tolerated, even at higher doses. Reported side effects like dizziness, mild palpitations, or shortness of breath are rare and often not confirmed in larger studies. Also important, don't confuse K2 with K1. Vitamin K1 plays a big role in blood clotting. K2 does not. Still, if you take blood thinners or have any concerns, it's best to check with your healthcare provider. For the average adult over 60, K2 appears to be a safe and promising support for bone and heart health. Vitamin D3 also known as colocalciferol, is technically a vitamin, but it behaves more like a hormone. 
and it plays a crucial role in bone strength, immune function, and heart health. Many people over 60 don't get enough D3, especially those who spend less time outdoors or who live in cooler climates. In fact, it's estimated that nearly half the world's population has low D3 levels. Low D3 has been linked to weaker bones and more fractures, greater risk of cardiovascular problems, poorer immune function. The good news, supplementing with D3 is safe and effective. Experts recommend checking your D3 blood levels first. Ideally, you want to be in the range of 50 to 90 nanograms per milliliter. Most people benefit from 5,000 IU of vitamin D3 daily, especially if levels are low. But more isn't always better. Very high doses can increase calcium in the blood and even harm your kidneys. That's why balance matters. Vitamin D3 can be a powerful ally. Just make sure you're using it wisely. Here's where many people get tripped up. Buying a combined K2 plus D3 supplement sounds convenient. One pill, two benefits. But there's a problem. Most of these combo pills contain only 90 micrograms of K2, far below the optimal dose, and 5,000 IU of D3. So if you try to get enough, K2, by taking four pills a day, you'll end up with 360 micrograms of K2, which is great, but also a whopping 20,000 IU of D3 every day, and that can be dangerous. High doses of D3 can raise calcium levels in your blood, potentially damaging your kidneys and other tissues. While some people say that's only a risk if you're low in magnesium, the safer approach is to avoid overdoing it altogether. The science is clear. Too much D3 is not better. So what's the solution? Take your K2 and D3 separately. That way, you can tailor the dose of each based on what you need. It might mean two pills instead of one, but it's worth it for your health. The convenience of one pill isn't worth the risk of an unbalanced dose. Let's go a little deeper. Many people are hoping that vitamin K2 will clean out their arteries. But the strongest research we have doesn't actually show that. What it does show is something just as important, maybe even more. Vitamin K2 has been shown to improve a condition called insulin resistance. And that's a big deal. Insulin resistance is at the core of prediabetes, type 2 diabetes and even heart disease. It often goes undetected, especially in older adults, because doctors tend to focus on cholesterol or blood pressure instead. But here's something encouraging. A major study in early 2024 confirmed that vitamin K2 improves insulin sensitivity, measured by something called HOMA IR. That's a sign that your body is handling blood sugar better and working more efficiently. So the real benefit of K2 may not be what it does to your arteries directly, but how it improves the way your body manages metabolic health. And when your metabolism is healthier, your heart, brain and bones are better off too. Here's the next part of your video script. Now let's be honest. Supplements like K2 and D3 can absolutely help, but they're not magic. They're tools, helpful ones, yes, but they can't replace what matters most, your lifestyle. You can't out-supplement a poor diet. You can't outwalk chronic inflammation. And you certainly can't out-medicate decades of poor sleep or high stress. The foundation is always the same. A nutrient-rich diet. Rich. Regular movement, even gentle. Restful sleep. A calm, supported mind. And after age 60, maintaining strength and muscle mass becomes more important than ever. Not just for mobility, but for your heart, brain, and metabolism. Supplements can support that journey, but they can't take it for you. So, should you take vitamin K2 and D3? For many people over 60, the answer is yes, but not in the same pill. Take them separately, in the right doses, and always as part of a bigger picture of healthy living. Your heart, your bones, and your long-term Vitality deserve thoughtful care, not quick fixes. If you found this video helpful, please subscribe to Timeless Wisdom. We're here to help you live smarter, stronger, and longer.
one small step at a time. Comment below. Have you tried vitamin K2 or D3? What did you notice? We'd love to hear your story.